What's up everyone, Max Power back here and welcome back to the arena. And in 2022, the arena is going to keep up to its namesake. Why do we say that? Well, for once, I've been saying it for some time, but we're finally going to get into what we're calling deck builds. This is a series that I've been planning on making for some time and it's going to be pretty much just that. Going over deck profiles or deck builds on some of your favorite or popular decks that are actually running and functioning in many tournaments and many gameplays and definitely common and present in the meta. If you guys like this idea, if you have any ideas on what other decks you'd like to use apart from what we're gonna to show tonight, definitely leave a like, comment down below, and share this with those that might be interested, of course. We're gonna spin a little bit more on the competitive side of things, as of course, this is one of the many favorites of the Pokemon TCG. Now, what deck is it that we're going over today, you may ask? Well, none other than Eternatus VMAX. Quite the powerhouse of a deck, I will say this. This is one of the first ones I wanted to build, mainly because I bought a, a deck box, a booster box of Darkness Ablaze, which is where these are featured in, and I had a lot of the parts already. But apart from that, if you had to buy all these separate, it is a bit of a budget, uh, not so budget friendly deck. You will need to save up. I did spend some time, you know, over time building it slowly but surely. And finally today, we have what would be a tournament ready and very, a successful deck to run. So I'm going to go over the components one by one. Of course, you can't have Eternatus without the Eternatus V as the basic. Definitely suggest running three or four of these in your decks since that way it'll give you the best opportunity to bring out your main attackers, which are Eternatus V Max. The main ability of this is Eternal Zone. As long as for all the Pokemon in play that are dark types, you can have up to eight Pokemon in your bench as long as all of them are dark and no other types. If this, ab this ability will stop working and there, you'll have Pokemon discarded up until you have five if you have others that are not dark type or their effects shut the do this down. For example, like Path to the Peak, it can shut down this ability. You won't be able to fully use it at all. But why would you want to do that? Well, Dread End, this attack does 30 more damage for each of your dark Pokemon in play. So if you have a bench of eight plus the nine, this is gonna dish out about 270 damage. Very, very heady, heavy hitting deck. But what else are we gonna include? Because it's not just Eternatus, right? We're actually running three coughing with the Ascension attack. Search your deck for a card that evolves from this Pokemon and put it on the Pokemon to evolve it, then shuffle your deck. You attack, you evolve immediately. And this is actually present in uh, Shining Fates as well as I believe Rebel Clash. The Weezing you want to evolve into is none other than Galarian Weezing with the Neutralizing Gas ability. As long as this Pokemon is in the active spot, your opponent's Pokemon in play have no abilities except for Neutralizing Gas. Very similar to uh, Path to the Peak that will shut down opponent's abilities, but only your opposing uh, abilities. You will still be able to run your own abilities and this duck this deck is very uh ability heavy as with this next card Galarian Moltres V. A great step won't save on any dark deck as well as others due, due to its dire flame wings ability as long as you have Moltres in your uh bench or in your active once during your turn you may attach a dark energy card from your discard pile to this Pokemon. Uh, of course they don't stack but it's a good idea to have two in your deck so that if one of them is either prized or gets knocked out, you're still able to use that second one and you constantly have a flow of dark energies getting replaced by the Galarian Moltres V. And we have another card that can actually help with uh, energy reusing and recycling. Another great staple for this deck is Crobat V. With that dark asset ability, you're able to drop the six cards when you play this from your hand uh, onto your bench. Very useful to have. A great way to fill your your bench and just have a lot of dark attackers ready so that that way your Eternatus can have much more firepower. <clears throat> the next one is actually going to be your last Pokemon. It's not going to really be an attacker, but again, something that's very dependent because of its ability. Galarian Zigzagoon. This is actually from Sword and Shield. Why is this so important? Well, Headbutt Tantrum ability. When you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench during your turn, you may put one damage counter on one of your opponent's Pokemon. This is great if you're just trying to get some small damage either to chip away or to go ahead and deliver the finishing blow to one of your opponent's Pokemon. You know, maybe you've already been working it. You've already attacked it with Eternatus VMAX once, but it still has 1020 HP. 
you just slap down some Galarian Zigzagoons and that will get you some prize cards without even attacking. That's the best part, guys. So now we're going to move into the energies itself. And you can't really have a dark base deck without this hiding special energy. This is great because as long as you have this attached, it does provide that dark basic energy. But the dark Pokemon that this card is attached to has no retreat cost. This is excellent, not only for your Eternatus VMAX, which has three retreat costs, but also your Galarian Weezing, which also has three retreat costs. And it's going to be very important for another card that we're going to be featuring in this same deck in a little bit. Apart from that, you need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, Dark Energies. It would be a good idea to have these, since, of course, you can't also attack if you don't have these as well so that'll bring you up to a total of about 10 energies for this deck a lot of people like to include 15 to 20 energies some decks do need them but not all of them do the reason being is because your eternatus for the most part they only need two energies plus any other attackers you have and again your glaring moltres will help bring those back from the discard pile should they end there guys just a brief reminder if you like this go ahead and leave a like on the video Comment on what your Eternatus VMAX build looks like. Are you running this deck? Is it work? Honestly, this is going to be a tournament-ready deck, and you'll see that now with the supporter and trainer cards that are coming along the way. <clears throat> Next up is Professor Juniper. That's an older version, but it's the same card because it says discard your cannon, draw seven cards. Any and all professor's research will give you that option, and this is, this is an important staple for pretty much any deck that you run today. That professor's research, you need to sometimes replenish your hand. Sometimes you want to just get rid of what you have and start over. Well, that's the best way to do it. If you want to, if you don't want to throw away your resources, but you also want to jam your opponent a little bit, then you play this lovely number, Marnie. Why Marnie? Because this will basically have everyone shuffle their hand back into their deck and then draw five cards if it's the person playing it or four cards if it is the opponent. It can help you while jamming your opponent if they already have all the cards that they need currently in their hand. Very, very useful. Wait till you see it in action. You want to jam your opponents further? Well, another staple, these three cards are always going to be included in most decks. Bosses, Orders. This used to be the Gust of Wind from base set. Switch one of your opponent's bench Pokemon with the active. The best way to use this, you can of course use it at any time during a game, but I find that the best time to do this is actually during... Uh, towards the end when you just got to sweep it up and you're almost done with the game get your last remaining prize cards we're going to go over two stadiums now old cemetery this is a good idea because uh when you slap down energy to anything that's not a psychic pokemon you get to put two damage counters on that pokemon yes it does hurt you but more importantly it also dishes out damage to your opponent which again if you're uh, combining this to galarian zigzagoon attacks from your other Pokemon, it's going to spell danger for your opponent, probably more so than you, especially if you account for that. The other stadium card we want to play is Galarian Mine. Why? The retreat cost of both active Pokemon is two more. I've only really seen this played also in um, Leafeon decks, but it works really well in this deck because you get to trap your opponents. You have your Galarian Weezing in the active, neutralizing gases in effect. No abilities can't be run. They can't retreat. Stuck. They will scoop likely every single time, or at least more often too. Now we go into our regular trainer cards, which form the last part of the deck. Another staple is this beautiful, very useful Great Ball. You discard a card from your hand, and you get to search for a basic from your deck. Add it right to your hand. Almost all decks are running these. It's great to have three of them, four of them. Just to make sure that you get that consistency going so you can get out your coughings, your Eternatus, your Moltres, your Crobats, whatever you want. Any deck, doesn't matter. Now, if you have Pokemon that evolve from those basic Pokemon, you also want to include Ed Evolution Incense. Anywhere between three, two, three, or four is a good idea. So that way you can draw them out, evolve them next turn, and you're set to go. Uh, additionally, another great idea with this particular deck is the great ball because it allows you to add more cards to your bench more pokemon you search the top seven cards from your deck any pokemon you find you get to just add them right in and that's basic and evolution so it's very resourceful very handy as long as you find some and if it's a deck that simply runs a bunch of uh, pokemon it's going to benefit you no matter what we're almost done guys but here 
Uh, we have another staple, the Switch card. Switch your active Pokemon with your bench Pokemon. Always useful, especially if you're running Gather Mine, so that way you don't get trapped yourself. Um, pretty flexible. You can run anywhere, anywhere between one to four, four being the max, of course, for any card. That's your playset right there. Second to last, Energy Switch. This is very useful, especially if you're running Galarian Moltres because you get to bring the energies back from the discard pile and then you get to move that energy around to your other Pokemon. So it doesn't matter if you'd say, hey, I don't want to use it on my Moltres, but he doesn't have to keep it. You can move it around to any other Pokemon. Guys, once again, if you like this video, please let me know. We're going to be covering other deck profiles as well, other deck builds, and share it with your friends and your family. These are all going to be tournament-ready decks, things you can play with your friends, competitive, or what have you. And now we get to reveal the last card, which is a Scoop Up Net. This is another good staple in a lot of card, a lot of decks. Put one Pokemon that isn't a Pokemon V or GX into your hand from your field or your board. Best way to do this, scoop up your Zigzagoons, play them back, do another 10 damage to your Pokemon, knock them out without attacking. Guys, thank you so much for taking the time. And next time we're going to be covering some more decks. Hope you like this video and have a great one. Also forgot to mention, let's go ahead and get the snapshot here, but you get to see the overview of all the cards in this deck. I'm going to take a picture here for the thumbnail. And once again, guys, thank you so much for your time. Have a great one.